The Israeli military pushing into northern Gaza as their war on Hamas terrorists, those hostage-taking serial killers, enters a new phase, getting closer to Gaza City 24 days after the brutal Hamas terrorist attack on Israeli citizens. Netanyahu, the prime minister, also saying that IDF is prepared for a long and difficult battle to annihilate the terrorist group. We showed you that a little while ago. Trey Yinks in Israel now. Trey. Harris, good morning. We do have breaking news for you. As we speak, sirens are sounding in central Israel. I want to just step out of the frame here and have my cameraman zoom into the skyline. If you look right above where the sun is setting, you can see two black lines of smoke. That's where those rockets just moments ago came off the northern part of the Gaza Strip. Despite the thousands of Israeli airstrikes that have targeted Gaza over the past several days, Hamas and Islamic Jihad, 24 days into this conflict, have maintained their ability to fire on major population centers across Israel. I do want to show you what it was like earlier today here along the Gaza border as Israeli forces were operating inside the strip behind us. You can see here the Israelis marking targets on the northeastern side of the Gaza Strip. In the distance, you can hear the thud of artillery. This is a very active front. And as the Israelis push deeper into Gaza, they anticipate there will be more resistance. And it's part of the reason they continue strikes against different positions. The Israelis are currently engaging Hamas militants in the northern part of the Strip. We understand that 20 Hamas members were killed in a single Israeli strike yesterday with Israeli ground troops on the eastern and western side of Gaza. Daniel Hagari, a spokesman for the Israeli military, spoke earlier today about the situation and the plans for his troops. Over the past day, we have expanded ground activities with additional forces entering the Gaza Strip, including infantry, armored corps, combat engineering, and artillery corps. Through integrated strikes of the ground forces and the IAF, dozens of terrorists were eliminated last night who had barricaded themselves in buildings and attempted to attack the forces that were moving in their direction. I want to explain and provide an example. We are conducting expanded ground operations in the Gaza Strip. The humanitarian situation inside Gaza continues to deteriorate. The Israelis are striking from both the air and the ground. We've heard the artillery units active today along the border. And the aftermath in this video here of neighborhoods in Gaza completely leveled. Remember, Hamas and Islamic Jihad are fighting from these neighborhoods and starting to battle with those Israeli forces along the Strip. But those desperate Palestinians, more than two million of them who live life under Hamas control, are running low on food and supplies. This weekend, they raided a U.N. warehouse inside Gaza, trying to take whatever aid they could find. Harris. Trey, before I let you go, um, I had reported earlier that Egypt has sent the largest uh, group of trucks carrying aid that we've seen so far since the war began and on October 7th. And I'm, I'm just wondering, is that enough? Have you seen that be enough for people to come from the north, Palestinian families and, and all those people who will be trapped up there with war going on if they don't start to move south? Is that enough to get people on the move again? Are you seeing that? It's certainly not enough. Yesterday, 24 aid trucks entered through Egypt's Rafah crossing in mm -hmm. the southern part of the Strip, and they went directly to the Palestinian Red Crescent. Thousands of Palestinians have heeded the warnings from the Israelis to head south, but they are quickly running out of food and water. We are hearing horrific stories, not just from Palestinian civilians there, but also aid workers who are trapped inside the Strip. They so why don't they go south? Supplies. You and just the... said 24 trucks had gone in with aid. Why don't these people move? They have moved, and, and they are in the south. Many of them okay. are there. And they're running and out of food and water there. there's simply not enough aid going in. Yes. So, Trey, you say thousands of people, but there are hundreds of thousands of people. Each and every day, the Israelis are warning civilians who have stayed in the northern part of Gaza to move south. But remember, with a population of more than two million people, mm -hmm. they don't have anywhere to go. And, and we've shown you the videos around the city of Khan Yunus, the second largest city inside Gaza. Palestinians are staying in, in tent cities that are being uh, built there. But in terms of the aid, the, the food and the, and the supplies, there is nothing other than these few aid trucks that have entered going into Gaza. 
And so people are, are eating and, and drinking what they have. The water is being turned on in certain parts of the Strip, but we are getting reports from Palestinians in Gaza that the water is not clean to drink. And so a humanitarian uh. situation is developing, and it's part of the reason that you have the United States, for example, trying to push to get as much aid into the Strip as possible to ensure that that doesn't become a whole other parallel story in this tragedy that, that unfolded here in the south of Israel on October 7th, leading to the war that we're seeing today. Yeah, it's just unreal. Where are Saudi Arabia, Iran? We know that the crown prince and the president of Iran talked early on in the conflict for 45 minutes talked about supporting the Palestinians. They don't want to support them with aid. Where's Jordan? Where's Qatar? Where are these countries to help their Arab neighbors, the Palestinians, that they want to fight us and Israel about, but, but they, won't, they won't help their own people? It's a great question. And, and so far, the Egyptians have been really resistant to provide aid to the Palestinians in Gaza and to ensure that that crossing is open. And you've seen the United Nations, the officials, Antonio Guterres, going to the, the border and calling for it to open, not only to let that aid in, but also to let foreign citizens out. Remember, there are hundreds of American citizens, many of them dual nationals, that are trapped inside Gaza. I've been yeah. texting with a woman who the State Department told her to go to the Rafah crossing multiple times. She went with her young son. She lives in Utah. And she's gone to the crossing. They've not let her go into Egypt. And she's terrified. She told me yesterday she has tried so many times that she is giving up. And when I text her to see if she is still OK, her response is, I am alive. Oh, God bless Harris. her. What is the White House? What's the State Department telling her? This is a huge part of the story that we are trying to report yeah. each and every day, but is not really being covered uh, across the board. The American citizens who are currently trapped inside Gaza, the State Department is is really dropping the ball here. And, and we should be very clear of, about this part of the story. There are many moving parts to this this conflict, mm -hmm. but it's not just people who were in Gaza visiting their families who have American passports in hand and simply can't get home to the United States. It's also aid workers who were inside Gaza, American mm. citizens that I've, I've talked to over the past 24 hours who have told me they are running low on food and supplies. Mm. And, and if I could, I know we're, we're tight on time here, but I want to just read you a, a text message that I received yesterday from a source who is dealing with this situation. And, and he describes what's happening. He says their water is turned off. When it was on, it was dirty anyways. Viruses and typical diseases that happen from stagnant water starting to set in. A lot of people vomiting. They're low on medicine and they are treating burns with iodine. They are running out of supplies. We're talking about American citizens, aid workers who are inside Gaza, who are describing these difficult and horrific conditions, and they can't get home. Trey Yings, your reporting is always eye-opening, and I appreciate all of it and what you told us about what's happening for those people who actually have made it from the north to the south. It didn't help them as much as they thought it would. They're not in the war zone, but they don't have anything to drink or to eat. It's just not enough aid going in. Again, I ask, where are these Arab nations? Where is Saudi Arabia? Really rich country could do something now. Trey Yinks, thank you, as always.